Welcome back to another week of Pumped Up Tea. I am Taylor. And I'm Sarah. <laughs> did you almost friends. forget? Did you almost forget your name there yes, for a second? I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, we just finished watching episode seven. Can yeah. we're already on episode seven. It feels really weird. It's so weird. But can you also believe that the reunion is literally going to be filming this week? Wild. 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 Insane. So what does that mean? We probably have like another nine or ten ish weeks left. Probably, yeah. Depending on how many episodes they finish well, with. Well, um, let's see. We looked at it. The last season was what, twenty something episodes? I think so. That probably sounds that's about right for a usual Vanderpump season. So you probably got about ten left. Oh my god. It's going by very fast. And I think we're we're finally getting to a point now where the season's really starting to heat up. It's getting a little spicy now. Oh, I am spiced. The tea is hot. I am boiling over. Mm-hmm. We don't have too much tea of the week, really. And the tea of the week was just, like, reiterations of what's been happening the last, like, week and a half. There was nothing noteworthy. That's why my notebook's not here. I don't have anything yeah. to say. The only thing I really have was Up and Adam had put out that there was a source that came out saying that, and I guess this was a close friend of Britney's. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess the reason for their split, their separation, has something to do with Brittany putting on a little extra weight and Jax was just not so much attractive to her. And that's probably why we now saw that in the preview uh, for the Valley that is coming up next week already. Crazy. Wild. I know. So I don't want to watch it, but now I feel like it's a train wreck and I can't look away. They're going to be turning up the heat for it for sure. It seems. The original previews and stuff for it did not entice me um but the this new these new promos are putting out i'm i'm mm, i'm they're dangling the carrot i'm 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 looking at the carrot i'm looking at it i'm still not 100 percent team i'm gonna watch the valley but they are pulling me in a wee smidgen yeah i i definitely feel like everybody's now starting to lean on the side of okay maybe the separation has some sort of merit to it i think now we're just surprised at the fact that after all these years britney's actually finally taking some time away yes, from jack that is that's the thing that is the surprise the surprise of it is not the separation the surprise of it is the separation <laughs> like yes and okay yes and no because like i'm shocked that she's actually leaving mhm but then at the same time, like, I'm not shocked because it's, like, fucking Jax. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not surprised that they're not I, – I think no part of me ever saw them lasting the test of time. Um, so that's why I'm, like – it's, like, a weird, like, I'm surprised because I never thought she would leave. But I also never thought they were going to be, like, 80 years old in rocking chairs together, like, looking at their grandchildren. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, like, a, it's like, the, it's like a both. I'm, like, stuck in the middle. I'm, like – Yeah. I have more to say on this too, but I'm going to wait until we get to that part in the episode. I think we all know what what we're thinking collectively, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, the Valley's coming up. I guess we're getting somewhat excited now. They're starting to drop more hints as to why the separation happened. Um, and I guess we'll really see from there whether mm-hmm. or not this is actually PR. But do I think that this split is actually going to last? No. 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 If she no. went back to him after the Faith incident, um... She certainly she will, will go, go back, back to him, him again. If the cheating on her before was not enough, it is not going to be enough now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think the only factor in her permanently leaving is Cruz. But uh, at the same time, I, I don't know. It could go either way. Yeah. Cruz will either be the factor in her leaving or the factor in her staying. She goes, I want my son to leave from a broken home. But at the same time, sometimes the broken home is better for the child. Newsflash, people. Sometimes a broken home is the best situation you put your kid in. That's why we're best friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm, actually, no, we're best friends because our charts, our birth charts are the opposite. Oh, my we balance God. each other out. We learned that. We learned that tonight. 
Uh, she has the same moon signs as Schwartzy, Schwartzy. and mm-hmm. I have the same moon signs as Katie. Yeah, me and Schwartzy are Libra moons, and, and you are an Aries moon. Yep, Katie and I are Aries yeah. moons, so we've definitely talked about this, too, about ourselves just in a prior episode. I guess mm-hmm. the last time we watched Allie break, yes. uh, break apart Schwartz's birth chart, Yes. now with the girls having their, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but with the girls having their astrology night, that's when we learned that Katie and I have the same moon signs, so okay. it's like it was meant to be. <laughs> Okay, it's cool. All right, all right. So now with all this talk about episode seven, all we're right, just going to go straight into it. Um, The gang has come back from Tahoe, and honestly, we'll just jump straight into Sheena and Lisa's conversation. It's been teased all <laughs> week. Um, Not a fan of it. I mean, nothing, <sighs> nothing new from what people have been saying all week. She makes the really shitty comment about Dancing with the Stars and calling Ariana her backup dancer. Smile on her face when she said that. It's just giving Disgusting. not a girl's girl. When has she ever been a girl's girl? Let's be honest, okay? When has Sheena ever been a girl's girl? Yeah, that's Unless true. Unless it didn't directly benefit her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she had, like, two wedding episodes. She had the it entire... It has been about her all the fucking time. She had her engagement party. She's had um, two weddings. Mm-hmm. Um, birthday parties. Birthday parties. Every season opened with her birthday party. Who she's dating. Who she's dating. Um, she tried to take over, um, James and Rachel's engagement party with her own engagement. Oh, I kind of forgot all about that. I have never forgotten about that because it was just so, like, peak Sheena energy. Like, how can I turn this event about me? Oh, you know what? Yeah, it's starting to ring bells. We're actually, so, in our, in Max and I's rewatch, because I know everybody's so interested in what Max and I are watching. I love to get Max and yours rewatch. <laughs> We've seen... Um, the James proposing to Rachel part. So we've seen Rachella. Um, and I think we're getting to the part now where she's so self-conscious about making the speeches, um, which means the engagement party is coming up very, very soon. But we're lear- relearning. Well, I'm relearning. Max is learning for the first time. Uh, Brock's history with his other family and yes. stuff. So that's kind of where we're at now in season nine. We're really, we're catching up. We're catching up on a lot of ground here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. Sheena has basically made every moment of every season about her. Even Andy Cohen made the joke about it today on Watch What Happens Live. Ariana's breakup because she was cheated on is somehow affecting Sheena Shea more than it than Ariana somehow. Yes, and Sheena has always been for the boys. She's like the she was the first Vanderpump pick me girl. Mm-hmm. And she is still the most consistent of the pick me girls. Yeah. It's her personality. I there are some things that she does where I can see it that it's the O C D is the anxiety and then there's other things that are just so inherently Sheena Shea. Yeah. That you're like um, we're all on the same page here, so I yeah. don't really care to give this any more time than it no, really no. needs. We've been talking. We've been talking about yeah. this. The all convo week. was gross. Lisa was gross. She knows gross. Lisa's really just there at this point to stir the pot. Oh, hundred percent. Her and Ken are just here to stir the pot. EPs, man. Yeah. EPs. Yeah. Um. So now we go to Ariana and Lala, uh, off on their little coffee date, which again, you know, fine. Um, it started talking- out great. Yeah, they're talking about the book shoot. They talked a little bit about Tahoe. But of course, now we're finding out the whole reason why Ariana even came to Sheena's defense at all about that photo was because Lala basically pressured her pressured her, and put her like in a corner over mm-hmm. it. And there's a portion of it that I understand Lala's standpoint on it. But at the same time, it's not up to Ariana to come to Sheena's defense. This is not the subject matter to even be bringing to Ariana's also, attention, why period. Why the fuck do we even need it? There was nothing. You went looking. She went looking for the hate. She went in, who lit, seriously, who goes in their Twitter mentions? Okay, I go in maybe like once a month. And I'm not I'll even on Twitter. Someone, I'll see some, I'm only on it for NASCAR at this point, and half the time I'm not even on it anymore. I refuse to be on Twitter. Twitter is just a poisonous uh, platform. I really don't want anything to it's do with so it. I, I refuse to go on Twitter. I'm not going to do it. I, no, no. I don't, I won't be on Twitter. It's Sorry, gross. X. No, it's Twitter. X for it's, Twitter. It's Twitter. Uh, it's the only thing I will, it's the only thing I will ever dead name. Okay. And it's just to spite Elon Musk, but like it's fucking Twitter. But like, you don't, who goes, the, if you know, right. If you know, this is also the thing as an anxious girly, you need to be aware of what is going to trigger you. Right. 
and what is going to spike that anxiety. Well, especially if you're a self-aware girly that's been going to therapy as much as these girls have right? been. If you know that seeing these comments are going to trigger you, why the hell are you looking for them? Mm-hmm. I will say, and I wrote this down in my notes here, but um, obviously Lala does not get Ariana's standpoint on this no. because she's trying to push the, she- the the Sheena defense. And I loved the back and forth of how like, oh, well, Sheena lost her best friend. And Ariana said, yeah, I lost two. I wish we saw more of that scene. I wanted that, to see the resolution yes. up to that conversation. Yes. Oh, Sheena lost a friend. Okay, I lost my life partner and my best friend. I was betrayed by my two best friends. How is that not worse? For months. For months. Seven months they did this behind her back and Sheena lost a friend. Boo fucking who to Sheena? A a friend that went and spread all these rumors about her and her husband. This is what I don't understand. This is what I don't understand. Why Sheena is so stuck on this Sandoval friendship. When it is very obvious by the aftermath of this affair that he does not give, he will throw her under the bus if it means that the spotlight is taken off of him. The negative spotlight is taken off of him because that man lost the positive one. Yeah. But like, why do you want to be friends with someone? Because he defended you 12 years ago when the show came out or he gave you money during the pandemic. That's that that just negates every bad thing he's ever done. Pay him back. Just give him the money back then in you that case. You don't even do that. You have no, you don't have to pay him. But like. She was what? cashing in on this entire thing. She should just give him the money back. It makes no like. sense to me. You had no problems dishing and, and doing all of these things to get your bag with Scandaval. And like, you know, talking about it consistently on your podcast for months, even now. Right. Because um, I do, like I said last week, I think that she's still holding on to this fantastical idea that she's going to get the best of both worlds. I was she's going to get Ariana and Sandoval. So she can have it both ways, yeah. But I think she's now seeing that she can't. Because like Ariana said tonight, right, on Watch What Happens Live, that the things that have been said that she didn't see until now are extremely hurtful. And I agree with her. The things that Lala and Ar- and Sheena are saying are extremely hurtful. There's somewhere inside of her that actually does truly care for Ariana and is like, okay, I'm actually losing my friend. I can, one can hope, right? But like, well, this is now a test to see how much she truly values her friendship. I don't really think she does, I'm going to be honest. I don't think she does either. I don't think she does. And not after that Dancing with the Stars backup dancer comment. Yeah. That was a very clear indication that she views Ariana as less than, right? Because she's sm- she goes, well, she was my, she's come a long way since my backup dancer. It's it, gross. It's gross. Also, I find it fucking laughable that this bitch is out here spending how many dollars on fucking dance classes. Okay, so that brings me to my thought. I was, I was holding on to this thought because I wanted to save it for here. Okay. Um, so, yes, Sheena did mention, and I've asked this before on, on the Gramosphere. I don't know if anybody really truly knew either, um, but... You know, this begs the question because she was taking dance classes. Does that mean that she actually went out of her way to audition, or was she just make was she just living under this assumption that somebody was just going to call her? She was living under the assumption, right? Like you don't audition for Dancing with the Stars. Okay, I wasn't sure how no, it no, worked. No, they seek out the celebrities. No, no. no. So she then was under that's... the assumption that she was going to get Dancing with the Stars. So she was. That's what she said. I was preparing for when I inevitably got the call. Your friend gets hit with a cheating scandal and you think somehow you're going to get hit with the call. No, I think that pre, even pre-scandal that she thought someday she was going to get to be on. She was going to be the one that they pull, right? Because they pulled Bravo people before. The delusion. I know, oh, no, no. Oh, Delulu AF. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, yeah, no. but they've mostly been housewives. Yeah, because and then it's, Lisa a Vanderpump. Franchise. it's just a bigger franchise. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't also, I don't think they've had a housewife or a Vanderpump Rules star um, I shouldn't say they've never had Vanderpump. Ariana was the first, but like I don't. No, think no, no. Lisa had... Vanderpump was. Yes, but years ago. That was what I'm saying. I think that was the last time they had a housewife. No, no. Um, Teresa Judice just last year. Oh, you're right. Okay, but again, Teresa has more fame than fucking Sheena Shea. She didn't last for like well, longer than two weeks, but she's she was there. Garbage, but that's a whole <laughs> other thing. She's also trash. But, like, I just, that, that comment was really gross. Like, I'm taking dance lessons. How dare she take an opportunity? There was also, now that we're on the topic again, there was actually uh, footage that leaked, that unearthed, I should say. I don't mm-hmm. know about leaked, but um, Ariana was interviewed 
at Dancing with the Stars while she yes. was still there. Yes. And they asked her, you know, who else they she thought, you know, should be getting the call to be on Dancing with the Stars. And the first name she said she was, was Sheena. Ariana is a good ass friend. I saw that clip. I hope that Sheena felt friend. like shit watching that. She probably doesn't. I'm gonna be completely I hope honest. She I have like no shit. faith. I have no faith in Sheena anymore. I co- I keep going into every season thinking that Sheena is going to somehow not Sheena, right? I go into it every season thinking this is the year that she is going to not be herself. And then I am just disappointed. So now I'm just done. Sheena is going to Sheena and Sheena is going to cry and whine and want everything to be about herself because she just, it's, that's it. It's just it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just who she is now. We just, when someone shows you who they are, accept it. That's true. She has shown us who she is over 11 seasons and now we just need to accept it. I'd say we were going to move on, but we're actually moving on straight to the girls' lunch. Beautiful. Um, underutilizing Christina Kelly Oh, my much, God. Christina Kelly. But glad to have her back. We I have Christina her. Kelly, Katie, Lala, and, of course, Sheena. Sheena. Um, out for a little girls' lunchy. And, um, well, the first thing I will actually notice, I'll take a quick pivot. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were dropping some real, like, seeds and hints here about Jackson Brittany. Oh, I said this to you on the couch. That was a production plant. That was a production getting ready to roll cameras. And they said, bring up Jackson, Brittany, Stella, uh, when you guys need to change the subject, why don't you bring up Jackson, Brittany? I guess Christina Kelly asked the question, is Sandoval more upset about losing you as a friend than he is losing Ariana in the relationship? Sheena says yes, and then justifies it by saying that uh, Sandoval had been unhappy for a long time. At, look at Jackson Brittany and uses what a, them as an example. What a fucking terrible friend. Awful. What a fucking terrible friend. And this is the thing. That statement is not untrue. It's very obvious, right, that he cares more about his friendships than he does hurting Ariana. And that statement is very hurtful. It makes sense that Sandoval is kind of worried more about getting iced yes. out of the group because yes. that's kind of what Ariana said mm-hmm. during one of her interviews uh, in this episode. You know, she doesn't really care to to associate with anybody that's associating with him because his main concern is basically going to make sure he gets in back in everybody's good graces so that he can in turn ice her out just like Kristen. Just like Kristen. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, patterns are going to pattern. It's what narcissists do. They manipulate and twist the situation to get what they want and then they push the only person that is ever going to call them out out of the equation because then they have no one going against them. Mm-hmm. And that is what he's trying to do. And then you have Katie doing the Lord's work oh, and being the only her. true friend that Ariana has right now. The only Because one. she too has been with a Tom that is oh. just painful. The tears in her eyes at that lunch when she was talking about the hurt that Sandoval has caused her was like heartbreaking and I literally had like an epiphany watching that scene because I don't think it's like registered that like because the focus is like on Ariana you know and I'm like I'm I'm myself focused on Ariana's pain because it feels like no one else not that I even know Ariana I'm acting like I'm but like I'm only aware of it just because we've been rewatching yeah 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 yeah, Sandoval has been awful 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 to Katie awful and it really and I think that's the thing too is that I don't I haven't really gone back and rewatched things, and it's so fresh for you, and you have a post scandal view of the show because I the only time I've ever watched was, was post scandal. I've seen from the beginning, so it's kind of it was it's hard to like see that, and now it's like Katie brought that up, and I was thinking back, and I was like, holy shit! Like Sandoval really has done so much to her mm-hmm. that like yeah, this it is not just. The pain he's caused Ariana. That's yeah. Make, like it's, it's a twofold, you know. And I think that like I it really hurt my heart to see her that upset about it. Katie's really seen Sandoval's like truest color. Oh, she's been the only one to call him out for years, and I was besides uh, Stassi. Besides Stassi, and I used to be like Katie, you just just like sit the fuck down. Like I used to like I I will fully admit that Sandoval really had me years ago, pre pandemic Sandoval really had me in his I was like a team Tom and Ariana um and I you I literally would be like there are moments where I'd be like Katie needs to shut the fuck up like Katie's being so problematic but now looking back you're like now that the blinders are off and you see his truth you're like holy shit mm-hmm. he was the pain he has caused her 
Yeah. And then you've got fucking Lala and Sheena out here being like, well, let's just forgive him. So it's two of your very close friends that have had things happen to them because of this person. And you want these two people to let it go. Like, that's so fucked up. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And um, I mentioned this to you earlier, but obviously in Max and I's rewatch, we're kind of in the the early stages of like Schwartz and Sandy's. Mm-hmm. Like right now their big argument is over what the name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Schwartz was the one who basically wanted Katie to plant the seeds of like doubt to Sandoval about mm-hmm. the name and try to urge them to change has, it. Because he can't stand up to Sandoval himself. He needed his wife to do it. Yeah. And he would she throw would his literally, wife to the wolves. Yeah. And yeah. she would watch him get steamrolled all the time by mm-hmm. Sandoval because mm-hmm. he's just that non-confrontational. So, you know, we watched Sandoval basically throw a whole hissy fit, get mad at Katie, you know, this, that, and the other. And then by the time Sandoval realized that this was all Schwartz is doing, he still felt the need to blame and go after Katie and say that this is all Katie's influence and still felt the need to blame Katie. So um, I just, I can't stand Sandoval. And like, you know, I'm reflecting now, but obviously I told you when I first started watching how much I really couldn't stand Katie for the entire first 10 seasons that mm-hmm. I watched the oh, yeah. show. Oh, could yeah, not yeah. stand her, but as of right now, I could not love Katie more. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden you like, you see it in a different way and you're like holy fucking shit well, from the second that she was getting the divorce with schwartz i knew that this there was going to be a new side of katie mm-hmm. that i could actually understand better it's amazing the way people blossom when they let go of the thing that is toxic and the thing that is making them act this way mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. like when you are so in in I can't think of the word, but when you're so in this like toxic environment, it brings out the worst in you. Yeah, absolutely. And like she was so t- in this thing with with to- with Schwartz, and like she just it brought out the worst in her. Mm-hmm. Because now, all she ever did was care about him and his well being and what was going to be best for him, and, and he it, just did not give a it shit. It pulls you down and it makes you someone that you're not. And yeah. now it's like we're seeing the liberation of Katie, and you're like, wow, look at her, a queen, an icon. A style icon, even. Yep. Yeah. So she really took uh, Sheena to school about Sandoval, just Ooh. reminding her of all the shitty things that he's done. And she's even and Sheena even acknowledged, like, oh, and you deserve that apology. You deserve that. Bitch. So after all this, you're still dying to be his friend? I don't get it. I don't. I cannot wrap my head around it. Ugh. It's li- I literally it's I, so gross. It's so I can't think I can't even wrap my head around it because I cannot imagine. Right, she wants to be out here saying that her is she is as good of friends with Ariana and Katie as I am as you and I are. And I cannot imagine someone doing these terrible, awful things to awful you, things. and then telling you, "Well, I still want to be his friend because like, he was nice to me one time twelve years ago." Like, I, what the fuck is that? Like, suck my dick, dude. Suck my dick. I literally, I cannot, I cannot, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's like, I feel like Sheena, like, laughs. She's not a girl's girl. That's what it is. Not a girl's girl. She does not give a shit about the girl's feelings. It's it is because the Sheena show. It's what Sheena wants when Sheena wants it, how Sheena wants it. Sandoval has really only given Sheena the, the kind of attention that Sheena wants. And that's, I think, what she craves. They enable each other. That's what it is. Yeah. They are enablers. And it's. When you're around someone that's enabling, you want that. They're giving you what you want. You're feeding off of each other. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard to be around. And then it's like you have the the Katie and Ariana pushing back and setting boundaries. And it feels like a slight against you. Like, how dare you? When it's just like the most normal boundaries in the world. Like, this man blew up my entire life. Please do not associate with him and me at the same time. And if you want to be his friend, I... I'm not going to tell you that you can't. I'm just going to remove myself, right? And then be like, how dare you tell me I can't be friends? Like, that's literally not what she said. At all. Literally at all. It was literally just, this person is bad for my mental health, and I don't want that had any connection to me. So if you feel like for your well-being and for your truth, you need to be friends with this person, that is wonderful. Because I want you to live the, what, your life, but I'm going to live mine. And that is not mean having mutual like it's that's not a hard ask 
It's not a weird boundary. How many times have people in your life you've let go of people because it's just not good for you? Yeah, all, all I've done it plenty. Because some, and then some, sometimes friendships, friendships ebb and flow, and you're not going to be friends with certain. It's like that expression: we are friends with people for a season or a reason, mm-hmm. right? Some pe- friends are just for seasons, for moments in your life, and you grow apart. Yep. You grow apart and you go separate ways and your paths are not conducive to each other anymore. At all. And that's fine. And if that's the road that Ariana and Sheena are at, that's nobody's fault. But you can't get mad at her for that, for doing what's best for her mental health. Mm -hmm. And you're out here saying that like, well, you can't hold on to this. You can't hold on to that for your mental health. And she's like, I'm not. But being around people that are around him is what's pulling keeps pulling me in she's trying to move away but having these mutual connections just makes her feel like she's still in it i hope the second that she sells that house that she ends up moving to new york i hope that she just stays in new york she's just I do too she looks she looks she's just like glowing she's on thriving Spotify. so much better there she's got her she boyfriend there her best friend better. is now there mm-hmm. like Mm-hmm. Like Brad just moved out to New York City permanently. I, I have a very strong feeling um, this is, if not the end of of Vanderpump Rules, the end of Ariana's run of Vanderpump Rules. I really hope so for her sake. Me too. She really deserves to be in a much better situation. And honestly, if she didn't, and I know that she's recently already been like saying that she's not going to leave Vanderpump Rules, but like you know, for her sake. She's going to have all these opportunities in the world now, mm-hmm. especially in the Broadway world, which mm-hmm. is where she wants to be. She should be doing that. She, she should can. really be doing that and not wasting any more I mean, of her time and energy on Vanderpump Rules. No, she's fucking breaking records on Broadway. Andy said it tonight. She's continuously breaking records. And she's... I mean, her Broadway run got extended. Like... I mean, yeah. Ex- she is by, that in popular demand. Yes. Like, and she's fucking good. Yeah. Like I've seen she, clips. She's apps. She's amazing. She's okay. so fucking talented. Like she does not so need. Bad. She does not need Vanderpump Rules anymore. And I think if it comes to a point where it's like her mental health versus the show, she she's mature enough to be like, I'm done. Like right? she should know how how these edits go with people mm-hmm. still filming with their exes. Mm-hmm. And like I just feel like she just doesn't need to be doing that to herself. No, I think um, I said this to you on the couch. I think certain if the reunion goes a certain way Mm -hmm. with ariana now seeing the things that lala and sheena are saying because i said to you i think that she was only seeing specific clips for the after show Mm -hmm. which makes a lot more sense and they're not showing her the entire show because she said on what happens live that she's very shocked and hurt by the things that they are saying behind her back and i really think the reunion is going to go one of two ways. And if it goes one way, it is the end. Mm-hmm. It is the end. Um, because I don't know how I could ever be around those people. If they are not actually sin- like sincerely apologetic for the shit that they are saying and taking accountability, then I am no longer around those people. And, and it's it not just of- shit's being said in the episodes. It's shit that's being said in the after shows too. Yes. And I that's what I'm saying. It's like she's – I think – and I said that to you – last week week before that i wonder if she's seeing what's being said on the after show and she's seeing what's seeing on the show and that would completely change my perspective of these people that i'm that i call my friends i would block them so fast so fucking fast so and fast. you see it on watch what happens live she's literally like she shook it she was like i she looked sin- very sincerely hurt about the things that they are saying mm-hmm. and she's shocked by it so i really think come the reunion time and they're filming it very soon right i it's gonna go one of two ways why are you gonna why am i gonna try for people that don't care about me that don't hold me in the same room the victim of the situation right right you're gonna align yourself with the perpetrator and the betrayer and call yourself my friend and then tell me that I need to get over it and get my head out of my ass that because I'm making all this money I'm I'm I should be over it because I'm making that's literally not how that works. Well, and I will go back to that point. I would literally be never these friends with people again. I never like I'm angry on Ariana's behalf about the shit that they're saying. It's fucked up. It's appalling. It's disgusting. It's so appalling. Like I cannot imagine saying these things about my friend who's gone through this kind of betrayal. Like you don't know how long hurt can linger and how long it could take for a huge betrayal like that. It can take years for you to get over. Hell, I'm still getting over some things that happened two years ago. I'm still working through it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, I've been cheated on before, too, and lost all of my friends for it. I was the victim of that situation, and somehow everybody stayed friends with the cheater. Yeah. I've been in that situation. It's very isolating, and it's awful. Like, it's horrible. Very damaging towards your mental health, and that's why I am- Mental health, your self-esteem, like- Like, I just- I mean, for that baby. Well, thankfully, this was all a very long time ago. We are grown, and we are evolved Mm -hmm. since then. Well, that's the other thing, too, I think, is that- 99.9% 99.9% of the people on Vanderpump Rules are not evolving and growing and changing. And it's like Ariana, Christina Kelly, and Katie are like, and I'll say Allie, I'll throw Allie in that mix, are like the only ones that seem to have a foot in reality. And I'll like, put Stassi in that category too. Stassi. I only didn't say Stassi because she's not on the show anymore. True. But true. like of the people that are on Vanderpump Rules right now, right, um, Katie and Ariana are the only ones that are very much evolving and mm-hmm. changing and are not still this you know what I mean and like you know it kind of makes me think too like with how much Lala has gone through she I mean she's been through a pretty bad situation you herself think, you would have thought that she would have also evolved I really thought coming in especially with how Lala was at the reunion I really thought she was going to be Ariana's biggest defender this season and her biggest fighter and I am shocked at the hypocrisy mm-hmm. and the way she's so quickly turning on Ariana when she has been through the same thing. It is baffling. Mind-boggling. Baffling. I don't understand it. I like, don't understand it. So moving on, we'll we'll go straight into Sandoval and Lisa's talk at Tom Tom. Boo. This is the talk that they've been teasing this whole time. Um that Rachel actually just talked about on her podcast just mm-hmm. last week. Um, where, you know, Lisa mentions that she had talked to Rachel at length. Um, obviously she's not very happy with Sandoval because this was around the point in time when Sandoval was trying to convince her to leave Mm -hmm. the facility. And around this point in time, she ghosts him because she did not agree with his standpoint, rightfully so, um, that he's just not good for her. And Lisa, it sounds, I don't. I don't know. I didn't listen to Rachel's podcast. I don't know what Lisa's take on it was, but it sounded as though Lisa had some sort of somewhat sympathy for her, minus the fact that she was being dismissive about Rachel's feelings. So they could talk about, uh, what was it? Oh, I'm sorry. She wanted to talk about, Rachel wanted to talk about Graham. Lisa Mm -hmm. wanted to talk about Sandoval. Mm -hmm. And then that's basically what Mm -hmm. happened. And I hope that Rachel decides to make um, Life is Lying merch. (sighs) Um, I said this to you. Um, on the couch when we were watching that scene, that it um is such another clear example of of Tom's narcissism, of him trying to tell her that the therapists and the mental health professionals are wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because I've gotten that many a times. Well, they're not. Te- they're telling you. They're manipulating you. They're telling you. Um, you know, they're giving in, they're, they're feeding into your delusions. You shouldn't listen to them. They're, that didn't actually happen that way, blah, blah, blah. They try and turn the people that are advocating for you and are validating your feelings against you. And Tom saying that to her was another like very textbook clear example of a fucking narcissist. Paired with the fact that he tried to paint a very different picture in the episode. The which is which is in which is interesting. So now I'm like, what's the truth? Because Rachel's account is different than Tom's account. Once again, we are asking Rachel, what is the truth? What here? is the real truth? That's what. Yeah, I don't even know if I. There's always listen. There's he said. There's she said. And then there's the truth somewhere in the middle. And I think this one is somewhere in the middle because I don't necessarily believe everything that Rachel says because. There have been moments lately where she has contradicted herself. All the time. And and spun the story five different ways. So it's one of those, another thing where I'm like, mm. the truth is probably somewhere closer to Rachel's account and less Sandoval's account. But I definitely think it is in the middle, mm-hmm. but more heavily on Rachel's side. We'll go like... You it's know, probably like an 80-20. They're, yeah. both, they're both known liars at this point. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. You know? I'll even bring up the comment that you saw on Reddit earlier. Maybe around this point in time, she was preparing for her lawsuit. Yes. Yes. I, 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 yeah, I wonder that too. Mm-hmm. If it may, I mean, because I don't know how long it, it takes. Time. I've never sued anyone, so. 
I've never sued anyone either, but I mean, I would imagine it probably takes a lot of time to get your, all your evidence together, to get mm-hmm. your story straight, to mm-hmm. figure out, you know, the right counsel that you're going to speak to, even though she was probably set up by Bethany or, or someone. That's so where I'm like, I don't necessarily think that she was on the path to sue until the Bethany podcast. But I think by then she was already well out of the facility. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I don't know. I don't know when I think that, but that comment was, was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but as I like to go, the, the two of the Vanderpump Reddits that I follow, um, I like to, they have threads per episode um, that I like to go in during the commercial breaks and I'll read her all the comments. Um, like all the ones that I think are really funny. <laughs> I'm like, look what this person said. Look what this person said. <laughs> Look at this one. Look, look at, at that one. one. Look at this one. Look, look at, at that, that one. one. But some of them are like, some of them are really funny, and then some of them are like very validating that I'm not alone in thinking this thought. That I'm like, yeah, weird. Other strangers on the internet think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the only reason why I would believe that it's not that far out of this world if she is preparing for a lawsuit because technically she did already have a lawyer. Otherwise, how else would she have sent out the, the cease and desist? desist. Mm-hmm. You know, so she had an attorney. I think she probably was thinking about it and wasn't concrete in her decision to sue until months and months later. Once everybody started capitalizing on it. Once everyone really started capitalizing on it. But also, I don't, I don't know. I find it really stupid that you're like pissed off that people are capitalizing on something that like you did. This wouldn't have even happened if you didn't do that thing. She also could have just joined in on capitalizing and made her own She merch. didn't want to return to the show. She says it's for her mental health, right? But it was also because she wanted to get paid as much as Ariana's getting paid. Ariana's been on the show for her longer than you. It's one of the reasons she didn't come back. And was if not she was only really making like 360 she was grand, already She was making 350k. Like, that's not exactly, that's, like, intern money. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, she wanted, she wanted Ariana money, right? And they wouldn't give it to her, so she didn't come back, and she said it was for her mental health. No, I don't disregard the fact that it was probably also her mental health, but she, if, I can guarantee you, if they agreed to pay her the Ariana salary, they, she would be back and suffer through whatever it was going to do to her mental health for that money. Yeah. But she, there's something. She's in shady, man. Yeah. She, it's gross. In other words, stop trying to give us a redemption for Sandoval. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You know what? There are, I will say, there are Tom sympathizers and Rachel sympathizers. They sprinkle around the internet. For anyone who's um, Phantom Mike, anyone that's watching, if anyone is in the um, Vanderpump subreddits, there's <laughs> one guy, Phantom Mike. Um, so a comment... Guys, if you know who I'm talking about, um, he is a huge, huge, he comments, like, he's always Team Rachel and Tom, and it's- That's so, hilarious. I, some, I, it's so funny, and he's so anti-Ariana, like, everything, Ariana breathes, and this man, like, it's, I swear to God, sometimes there's a comment, and it's, like, waiting for Phantom Mike to show up, but, like, there are people on the internet that are Tom sympathizers that are, are falling for this redemption arc. Um, it's giving Giga Chad. Yeah. It's just not, it's not it. I think anyone with a brain um, is looking at this and being like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So anyway, we'll move on. I'm not even going to really give this much, too much energy, but Lala and Lisa sit and they talk about rebranding, give them Lala. Um, They briefly mention um, Lala's uh, search for a sperm donor. And in that moment, (laughs) the way that Lala explains like this baby being my baby, nobody can take it from me. I then, I, I understood your standpoint from last week mm-hmm. that much more. So mm-hmm. if you don't know what we're talking about, please refer to last week's week. episode. Mm-hmm. We won't give it too much time here today. No, no, no. Um, it's, um, it's giving, it's giving a future golden child. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anyways, um, off to see you next Tuesday. Uh, we are, we see Joe once again. We're back with Schwartz and Joe with She's, Allie and James. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about her, but it's, it's, mm, the ick is there. I'm creeped out by her. There's something about her that I just, I'm like, I don't want to be, I don't want to look at her. I don't want to be around her. I don't want. Well, the last time we talked about Joe, right, we said that we might, we would probably like her if we ever met her in person. I think I that it maybe it's weird it's weird. It's probably weird to see her right now because she's probably very uncomfortable on camera, and I kind of feel that. 
And I kind of got that from that following scene as well with Schwartz because they don't want to talk about too much stuff. Even Schwartz just mentioning that they've had sex before, even though it was already public knowledge, we already knew that they've been, you know, doing the do. Um, you know, gonna, she's just very uncomfortable by that. I'll just throw this out there, okay? Um, you know when two people are fucking, okay? Let's be honest, right? You know when two people are doing the do, okay? You can't, there's, there is an intimacy there between those people that, like, is fucking obvious, okay? Like, you know, you know. The chemistry is there. There's no, but, like, there's a, it's like, when you look at certain things that Rachel and Tom, the way that they interact with each other after they slept together, you, you, you clock it and you're like, those are two people that are sleeping together. You know what I mean? Like, you can pick out when two people are, like, Well, that's why everybody was so sussed out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you can tell, Joe. I know that she probably didn't like it being aired, but, like, you can fucking tell. The way that they interact together, those are two people that have done the devil's tango together. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's... Hi. It's obvious. (laughs) But quick pivot. So, um... You know, Sandoval then comes in on the double date, just being the the weird fifth wheel, and Ooh, Allie becomes show up, and Allie becomes uncomfy. They, but I just didn't like Never. that they did the whole like, "Hey guys, I just happened to be right up the street, and that I just was, figured I'd stop on in," no. like as if he's not on the casting call. Shut the fuck up. That mm-hmm. was absolutely. So, there are there were a lot of scenes tonight that I did not like. That was Tom just randomly popping up. And then them planting the let's have boys night. Like there's a lot of things this season that feel very manufactured and I don't like it. Just like kind of in the whichever episode it was when Sheena like kind of runs into Tom and Kyle Chan at See You Next Tuesday. And then they just go to have that conversation and Sheena's just like, I'm here. Yeah, Mm -hmm. no, I don't. Tom, although I will say. It could have been a production thing, but it also is not out of Tom's wheelhouse to show up where he's not wanted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not it's not outside of, like, logic for Tom to, like, fucking show up at See You Next Tuesday because he knows that the, the girls are not there. Well, the highlight of the scene was when he just showed up and gives James a pair of sunglasses and Allie just goes, James, he got Rachel sunglasses last year, too. And the way she just... She... And you know what? You can see in her body language that she is so uncomfortable around Sandoval because she, her and James were very snugly on that little couch, right? They were very close together. They she were practically was, double dating. Her her body language was more open. Like she was facing the conversation. And as soon as Tom got there, she turned herself more this way. And so her back was more towards Sandoval and James than it was before he showed up and she was on her phone like the whole time Mm -hmm. like you can see it that she is just like uncomfortable yeah she is a girl's name very uncomfortable I'd I'd get up from there be like I'd be like babe have fun with this conversation I'm gonna go like somewhere else yeah I'm gonna go find Peter that's what I would do Peter I just like Peter. I don't know what it is about Peter we need to talk about Peter real quick for a second because um we didn't get to talk about this really at all, I don't think, period. But uh, Peter did an interview with Bravo and Blaze. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we found out why why he's not. Because everybody else had the same question as us. Where's, Where's Peter? Peter? And it turns out Peter was basically asked to come back to the show essentially for free. They just didn't have the budget for him. And so he made the decision not to come back, rightfully so. Because, I'm, and hey, he's my not, guy, Peter. Yes, and he said he's not friends with the Toms anymore. So, like, I, I think I had said to you, I think the only reason that he would even have come back was because he was still, he was on the girl's side. Like, he would come in as, like, with, as a backup for Katie and um, Ariana. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like, he's not, if he, he's not. He wouldn't have played a major role in it. No. But at the same time, you know, it's just good to have, have for, like, the. Like, a day rate or something. Well, like, they, like, they did with Kristen in season seven. They had always paid him. For, like, the 10 seasons prior that he was on the show, even though he wasn't on there all the time, like... They paid him correctly. And you would think, too, with, like... Like, I understand there was probably more being put towards the budget for, like, the production value, because obviously that... You could tell that that's gone up. It's gotten better, And obviously they had to pay more towards the wages of the ensemble cast. Fine. Mm -hmm. But, like, you really mean to tell me that after all that you've capitalized, after all the reviews and the ratings that you got last year... You couldn't spare at least a little bit for Peter? I want to know. Like, I would have loved to see Peter 
Um, like at the see you next Tuesdays when Sandoval comes in and Sandoval tries to talk to him. Like I, you, you're telling me, I, you, I guarantee you Sandoval is trying to get Peter on his side. Like, give me a scene of Lisa talking to Peter or something, you something. know? Something. I would love to know what his opinion on Scandoval is. We're not even, we don't even have any scenes of Ken either. I like, Ken. we got, we got that quick, like, second blip Sneaky. of Ken and that was it. Like, even for this season, you know? Mm-hmm. When did when did we shift away from the characters that bring us joy? You know, they're not yeah. main characters, but no. at least they bring us so much joy when they're there. For the for the drama. It's like the it's like that next door neighbor that you really like because they'll give you like a cookie every now and again. That's me. <laughs> that neighbor. Um but yeah, one of the other noteworthy things that I mentioned after see you next Tuesday because there was really nothing there. Um, Schwartz and Joe go on a little date and Schwartz ends it up, not Schwartz, Joe ended up in the chair. In my and she had her own confessional. I don't understand that. That was weird. Like, how does a first timer on the show manage to get her own interview? Sometimes they will. When you have nobody else. When you have nobody else to comment on. When you're filling. Wild. It was weird. It was, no one wanted to see that scene. No one gives a shit about what Joe thinks. No one really, at this, like, no one cares, right? We want to see, um, we want to see the fault. Like, we, no one gives a shit about Joe or what Sh- Joe and Schwartzy are doing in their free time. I want to see the tea. I want to see the drama. I want to see more of um, uh, Brock and Sheena trying to work through this issue that they have. I, I don't even, even want to see that. I don't care about it. I would I even don't. prefer, like, fucking... Um, I would literally see so many other things. I, or I would prefer even Lala and like a sperm donor conversation before I give a shit about Joe. But there are, but I'm saying like there's other conversations yeah. and scenes that I would rather be shown than like creepy Joe and like Schwarzy. Yeah, that was such a that was that 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 scene was so I don't even know what happened in that scene. Like, how are they so desperate? To find somebody to to film with Schwartz. Like, you mean to tell me that you couldn't even get Brock to, like, put no. some time towards hanging out with Schwartz for a minute? No. It's not like they're not friends, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think that Brock is, um, I don't know. I mean, Brock, they, Brock lives a different life than he's got a kid. Like, he's married. Like, he lives a whole, that boys night, you know, was like a once in a blue moon, like, get together with the boys. But, like, I don't really think he has anything in common with Schwartz. That's true. You know what I mean? That's true. And, like, Schwartz can't film with Ariana because he's chosen Sandoval, right? He's not going to film with his ex-wife because she doesn't want anything to do with him aside from their dog custody. Like, Schwartz doesn't have anything but... And, again, another reason he should let Tom go because his his part on the show would have been so much more and they wouldn't have to fill it with these filler things like with Joe if he didn't side with the devil, if he had gone, like, if he had, if he grows and he lets go of, like, Sandoval, he could have, we could have so many wonderful scenes with Ariana and with Katie and with Sheena, like, because he Schwartz sometimes has wonderful advice over the years. He's had really good points and he's made, had good, like, he's had good moments and, like, you could have that, too, if you just fucking let Sandoval go. Like, for a little bit there, he was pissed at Sandoval and they weren't really for like five minutes for like five minutes but if you had held on to that dude your bar probably would be doing better you wouldn't have to drag your friend on the show that doesn't want to be on the show I just it's I you know I don't get to that dude stop putting Joe on my screen speaking of speaking of the bar too it sounds like it's getting closer and closer to closing no updates on that just yet but you know it doesn't sound like it's doing well oh no so I wonder what's going to happen with that. I mean, they fucked, just, Sandoval fucked it over. Completely. I mean, it didn't even seem like he was running very well to begin with anyway. Yeah, but I think it would have had more of a fighting chance if Scandoval didn't happen, mm-hmm. like, right after they opened. Oh, my God. Speaking of restaurants, can we talk about how fucking hilarious it was that Sandoval thought he had a say in Lisa bringing over things from Pump at Tom Tom? I wasn't even paying attention to that scene completely. Like, oh well, he, <laughs> she had mentioned that she's like, "Oh, we brought the um, the chef from Pump over. We're gonna make it more of a dining atmosphere." At Tom Tom, and he was like, "He made." I think he made some kind of comment about like his opinion on it or something like him not having a say. And Lisa was like, "Why would I consult my 
2% investor. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that, actually. I was like, yeah, you seem to have a lot of weight yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. somebody who only owns which 2 and a half percent of the bar. Fucking, which I thought was hilarious that he even thought that he had a say in what goes on at Tom Tom. You own enough of it for your name to be involved, and that is about it. Like, that's where it stops for you, my dude. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. There was actually a scene in season nine, too, when they were talking about Schwartz and Sandy's, where there was a portion of the investment that Schwartz couldn't afford, and Sandoval kind of, like, said, oh, I'll cover it for you, mm-hmm. knowing that it was going to give him, like, more a say. level of controlling mm-hmm. stake. And I was like, oh, my God, we're watching yeah. the manipulation happen right before our eyes. Yes. And we did, it, I didn't even notice the first time I watched that. Because if it's like 49.50, that 50% now has more say in it technically than the 49%er. You only need 51. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You only need 51%. Mm-hmm. So he put the way he tried to frame it as like, oh, doing Schwartz a favor. And then he's like, yeah, I'll actually have more say in the bar. Like, go fuck yourself, dude. You suck. Everything, everything that he does is is in – it's a favor to somebody. Well, I'm doing it for you. Classic narcissism. Yeah. So. Well, I'm doing it for you. It's to benefit you. In the long run, it'll be good for all of us. No, it's not. No, it's not. But um, – anyway. <laughs> now we have the Rat Pack Night split with, uh, with the boys, split with the birth chart night for the girls. Um, which I could care less about the Rat Pack night. I only really cared about the birth chart part of the night. This is when I learned that Katie and I now share uh, moon signs. Mm-hmm. So Katie, if you happen to see this, we're both Aries moon girlies. Yeah. And uh, I I feel you on every level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I wish we got to know like their full birth charts, which I know probably would have been a little weird, but no, I, I don't care. Like, birth charts. I would love to know. Um, you know, the first half of that scene really didn't share much no. for us until, until, and this moment started being ooh, teased, ooh, ooh. you know, maybe a few days ago at this point. Um, but this is kind of the part where Ariana confirms that right before Scandal broke, she was at her last $2,000 because a lot of her money was tied up by her house and by something about her. Um, and Tom was overcharging her for the mortgage. Definitely. Well, which we found out later. Yes. After the yes. season had already wrapped. But yeah, um, it's just, it makes you wonder though, what the fuck is everybody doing with their money? Like, I understand like, yeah, you've had a lot of money going into like your house they and then your that they stuff. Afford. Yeah, right? Like you like, weren't being no good reason. with your money. There was no, no, they're not. There was no reason. And I will give them this, that the cost of living in in, in California alone is expensive, but Los Angeles is even worse. Mm-hmm. So we'll give them that, that they um, cost more. But the gir- but they do live beyond their means. They must be. Because if you think about it, Chris, when Kristen's house, when she was buying her house, was so much smaller than and more um, suitable for her income. Yeah. Compared to, like, there was no reason for Ariana and Tom to own that large of a house. That expensive of a house. And that yeah. expensive of a house when it's just the two of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it they, they live beyond their means. They're buying designer things. They're spending. Now, I will say, I think Ariana is probably a little more responsible with her money. Slightly. Slightly more responsible than her money than... But if you think, okay, like think of the, the, I just thought about this. Do you remember when her and Sandoval were in, I forget what season it was, but they went on that house tour. It was a couple seasons back. I don't think so. She had, well, she had her. Which is crazy. I literally bob. rewatched all she of She had like cute little now, bob hair. It was just, I think it was the. Um, like I remember when they bought the house and yes. they spent the whole first year there with like no furniture. Th- this was back, I want to say probably like season six or seven. Um, they had gone and looked at a house. And it was a very, it was more like James's house, the uh, size of it. Um, and they had gone and looked at what it was in their tax, in their, in their tax mm-hmm. bracket, let's say. Right. Um, but they are definitely like, it, and the same with Sheena, when Sheena was like, oh, I was so broke. It's because they live beyond their means. Yeah. Like, there's no reason to own a $2 million home for two people with some pets that are not planning to have children. Yeah. And need that large of a home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can buy a Kristen size home or like James's size home. And James is living in a neighborhood that may, is, is less expensive than the Valley. It's less expensive because it's right near the airport. But it's within his means. That's true. And arguably you could say that James makes more money because he's DJing outside of the show. I was just going to say that. Yeah. He's he got probably the whole makes, DJ career on top of Vanderpump. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So like 
And then whatever other like Instagram, social media yeah, deals yeah. that they get here and there. But that's that's why they run out of money is because they live beyond their means. Yeah. So that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now it's just it's just kind of crazy to wrap your head around it. It but, is. But then again, these are these are like not finance people. These are basically reality stars. No, they're not out here like the rest of us that are like scrambling paycheck to paycheck. Liter. I have no paycheck. Like I have no paycheck. She right literally now. was like, I was down to my last two thousand dollars, and I thought to myself, what I would fucking give to have two thousand dollars in my bank account right now. But it paints a better picture now as to why she hasn't been in such a rush to move out of her house because where she the fuck is she gonna go? But she was right though. Like she was not in a. You're not thinking that when you. I mean, she's planning to spend her life with Tom. There was no part of her that thought to have a safety net because she thought she could trust him and they thought they were going to be fine. And they were, because like, I remember they said they were in counseling, like they were working on things. Like Mm -hmm. she was not ready on March 1st. She had, she didn't have an emergency fund. Like there was no part of her that thought she was ever going to have to move. She wasn't ready. Listen to you ladies. Keep a secret bank account. You could be married to like Prince Charming, right? Um, Always have your own bank account. And always, because you never know what's going to happen, always be prepared. Mm-hmm. Not even, not not just for like a separation, but just like be prepared for anything. If you Literally are, anything. If you are capable, right, because a lot of us are not capable of saving literally anything. Um, if you are capable, at least have some speed. <laughs> yes. Because you, you, you never know what's going to happen. The world is unpredictable. Relationships are unpredictable. Um, but yeah, like she said, she wasn't prepared, which is also what pisses me off. About Lala. And Sheena. And Sheena. Because only just a few scenes ago at the girls' lunch, she said Ariana's bringing in millions and millions of dollars. She's fucking not, guys. Like, word for word, what Ariana think, said was not happening. You think she got a million dollars for the Razor commercial, for the Batteries commercial? They probably paid her just enough. Like, dirt money. Yes. Like, I'm telling you, even as a not celebrity, like, influencer, like, I'm telling you, these companies will And you know why out. she took it was because she didn't have income coming in. She took every opportunity she could because she needed the money. Yeah. Like, I don't know where they're thinking that she's out here making a million dollars. And even Broadway doesn't pay a lot of money. Broadway pays, but not what people think it pays. And they still felt the need to just be like, oh, just move out. Was just really move pissed, out of your house. It was really pissed me off. And that, I just think, I just thought about this. Um, on the on the after show a couple weeks ago, Lala and Sheena were going in about her, just move out of the house, just move out of the house. And this is after you've already had this conversation with her, right? Mm-hmm. This scene was filmed months ago. The after show was filmed in December. So you, at this point on the after show, already know that she cannot just move out. And you're going to keep perpetuating this thing of like, well, she's still living with him. So like, I don't know why we still can't hang out with him. Like, she can't afford it, dude. She can't afford it. It's enraging. Enraging. You know that your homegirl is still scrapping for pennies despite the situation. And because this whole thing happened, she basically had to go to her her attorneys and her agents and be like, all right, let's go. Let's, go. let's make these let's make these deals happen. It, whoever, if somebody calls me, we are saying yes, no matter what it is at this point. And that's what she did. And you guys can get mad about it all you want, but you guys could have done the same thing. And you did. You used her to make money. Exactly. You, you are profiting off of you her tragedy. You used her pain. Send it to Daryl, your podcast. You used her pain to make your money. And now you have the audacity to come in here and bitch at her and complain because she's not giving you enough sympathy. Like, fuck that. Fuck that. Yep. Bring Ariana over to your emo nights so you can then bump up your music career. Right? Make all this money. Because that's, that's how this works, right? You bring um, Ariana along with yes. you to emo nights so that all your cool little emo songs will get more attention. Because I'm going to be completely it. honest. If I was in LA and I heard about emo night and it was just Sheena Shea, I wouldn't fucking go. But the minute I knew that Kate, the minute I would learn that, that Katie Ariana and, and Ariana are going, like, I'd be there. I'd be there. No, it really is. That's the thing that's really pissed me off with Sheena and Lala is that they had no problem using Ariana's pain for their own gain. Um, Andy Cohen even said that at Watch What Happens Live. Yes. But, and then you have the audacity to tell her that you are not giving me enough sympathy for my pain, right? You're not – like the, it's like Sheena is out here being like, why isn't she – she's not sympathetic enough to me. She's not blah, blah, blah to me. Like – Cry me a fucking river. Cry me a fucking river. You had no problem using her pain um, and having her on your podcast to make you money. 
but now you want her to put her pain aside for you. Oh, I'm so sorry that the man that just destroyed my life um, is um, that you lost a friend in that. I'm so sorry. Like that. What the fuck is that? I, I, I cannot wrap my head around that. I literally, I sit here and I try and like think about and see if like I could have sympathy for Sheena losing a friend, but I just can't. I just the same girl that's been there for her for all of her milestones for her to I be just, her backup dancer to be there for her proposal to be there for her I weddings just, both weddings I can't comprehend being Sheena in that situation and thinking that Ariana owes me any kind of sympathy or over something that of, affected her directly or any kind of ear to um your plight with Tom yeah, so I appreciate Katie once again stepping in during that scene to yes. when when Lala Seven was three. trying to catch her in like a moment of hypocrisy, mm-hmm. being like, "Oh well, James is hanging out with Sandoval right now, so you know what do you what would you do in that? What would be your stance there since James is hanging out with him?" And she's like, "I'm not fucking about it. Like I've been saying, I'm not about it." And there's no issues with those boundaries. No, you know, so you see. You notice um, Lala, when she knows she's in the wrong, she gets very vicious. Very vicious. Very vicious. She's always been like that. It's very te- – and, and that now now you look at it and you're like, oh. Because you're not going to get that defensive if you are correct. You know what I mean? Somebody posted, I want to say it was Bravo, Bravo Bitch Batches or something like that. Um, it was a meme of Kong versus Godzilla – and it was saying Lala and Ariana in the My Ex is Worse standoff. Both exes can Hilarious. be. Hilarious. That was really funny. But like you can both have. And that's, it's like that. It's People do this all the time where it's like you, just because you have it worse, you think that that person can't have sympathy. You also think that just because you've been in this situation before that you can tell others how to act but in the same thing. situation. It's like she's coming from this place of, well, you're not dealing with a custody battle, so therefore you can't complain about it because my situation is worse. You know what I mean? It's like the people that, like, I saw a TikTok today um, that it was a woman complaining um, that her office was now making them go back. She was work from home for the last four years. And her um, company was making her go back to work in the office for two days. And she was annoyed by it. Because her her product her work product like her production of whatever you want to call it like was not like lower being at home and there was no reason she had all these reasons why working in the office oh productivity was low yeah yeah thank yeah. you like she had all these reasons why being in the office was bad for her and the entire comment section was people of like well I'm an employee so I don't know why you're complaining be grateful that you have a job blah 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 and like that's what this thing with Lala reminds me of it's like well be grateful that you don't have a custody battle like. Be grateful like this. Like you don't have to split Christmas with your you don't have to you know, split so your like, kid so for it's Christmas. Like, it's, like, that, it's that narrative that people get where it's like, well, mine is worse, so therefore you can't complain. And that's what Lala sounded like. Someone that's out here being like, Well, I have it worse, so you need to stop. Whilst defending somebody who does not have it worse in their situation. Like Ariana's Ariana's situation is not any better or worse than yours. Like, they don't have a child together, but she is... But thank God they didn't. They were about to. They were trying to. You're paying lawyers for a custody battle. She's paying lawyers for a house. Or for the sale of a house. Or for the sale of a house. Like, it's not... I'm sorry, Lala, that you were going through this terrible custody battle, and I feel for her, and I hate this for her, and it must be so difficult... To have to parent with someone so terrible. On top of having to rebrand your entire business because of them and their involvement. Like, I I am sympathetic to that. But that does not give you the right to tell Ariana to shut up and get her head out of her ass. She can be just as... It's like me having a broken arm and you have a whole body cast. And you're saying, well, don't complain about your arm because at least you're not like this. Mm-hmm. It's fucking annoying. It's annoying. We can have, you can, you can be in this terrible thing and still feel bad for your friend and not come at her like a fucking rabid dog. Yeah. And then get pissed off at Katie for uh, Katie saying that, doing that little hand thing to Ariana was fucking hilarious. (laughs) She was like, do you see this bitch? 
Yeah. yeah, so. Why are you doing that? Right? I'm like, like, shut up, Lala. Watching them go toes after being so close last season because Lala was always there for Katie last season in her uh, divorce with Schwartz. Yeah. Remember, she took time away mm-hmm. from Sheena's bridal stuff last season so she can go yes. to dinner with Katie and Christina Kelly. Yes. Who were complete outsiders from the whole wedding because they weren't even invited to the wedding. And now, you're, now like, where – that really just makes me so mad because it's, like – I think Lala's just never truly been team Ariana. I think oh, absolutely that fucking not. Absolutely because fucking not. they've always had, like, that rocky, like, back and forth she for the longest is, time. She is – on the side of whoever is going to get her the most screen time and whoever is going to get her further ahead. Um, and it really just pisses me off because it's like, you are so gung-ho a year ago for this person and you five months ago were screaming at Sandoval and Team Ariana and now all of a sudden you're not because it's not because you're not in the spotlight anymore. You're not being sh- – like, I just, don't, I just don't get it. I just – it's another thing I feel like Lala is, like, not a loyal person. Mm-hmm. Like, there are moments where I'm like, I want Lala in my corner, but at the same time, I'm like, maybe I actually don't. Because you know that she's going to build you up just to turn on you later. Absolutely. When you get too big, too big for her um, – and I say that in air quotes um, – she now turns on you. I'm going to actually relate this to, to, so I listen to the Chicks in the Office podcast all the time. And one of my favorite things that they do every week, because I watch The Bachelor, I know you watch The Bachelor, uh, Bachelor Nation, chime in. Um, if you've watched uh, Chicks in the Office, they do like an after show after mm-hmm. every Bachelor episode. Is that what you were watching when I got here? No, no, no. I, that was a, that was the Dear Shandy. Oh, okay. Um, okay. They, they also do Bachelor recaps, but mm-hmm. it's... um. What the chicks in the office do with cutting stems, it's essentially like a live after show that's immediately Ooh. after The Bachelor. And it's essentially just like their their live reactions, okay. right? And uh-huh. and recapping the episode. Uh-huh. Um, and I I wanna say it was during cutting stems. If not, it was probably a recap episode that they did on their podcast. But either way, I know it was them. And you know, you've been watching um Bachelor Nation completely build up Maria, right? Team Maria. She was in the final four. She came from the really – she's from Canada. She has the black hair. She had all that drama with that girl, Sydney. Uh, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I only watch the hometown dates. Okay. So you don't – okay. So then you don't really know what no, going on. No, I watch the hometown dates, and it kind of sucked me in a, oh, okay. a wee smidgen. So I am going to watch um, last night's episode eventually because it really – pulled me in because now I really and the commercial for it this week was very like put the note on the door Maria well Maria had the, the Italian family oh wait wait okay yeah 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 that one that yeah, one yeah yeah very Sopranos like mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. but anyway we spent the whole season basically just building up Maria because okay. she was just awesome people were starting drama with her for no reason probably for people screen time mm-hmm. um and then you know not long after that, people started kind of tearing her down afterwards. Yeah. So then they kind of discussed this concept of, you know, we build these people up, we build them up, and then when they get too big, you start tearing them down. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just becoming cocky or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what's basically been happening with Ariana. They've Except been- she's not even being cocky. Right. Like, I don't know where this narrative that she needs to get her head out of her ass is coming from. But that's what people are trying to perpetuate is that, mm-hmm. you know, you build her up, you build her up so much, and then when you build her up too high, you start to feel the need to just tear her down and we bring had her down. Her, we had her back too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, she girl was, boss too hard and now we're mad at her. Yeah. I girl boss too hard. She we had her <laughs> back too we had her back too much and now it's like and that to me and that's just gross. Like that's not a real friend. Like it, there can there's never a moment where you have your friends back too much. Never. Never. Like if that's a real friend, like there's never a moment where I could have your back too much. For real. Or you could have mine back too much. Like it's just we have everybody's back and we want everybody to win. It's like, you know. If you are a real what, friend, yeah, you are happy and you are supportive and you love that this this friend who just went through like one of the worst heartbreaks that anyone could ever go through and one of the worst betrayals like is lifting up and she's she's coming out of it on the other side and she's not being sucked into this she's not sitting there wallowing and sad and she's trying to make the best of it like you should be cheerleading her be like yes girl get that dancing with the stars yes girl go on broadway Mm -hmm. get that bag 
Like, uh, you should be in her corner being like, I'm so fucking proud of you. Not over here being like, well, you need to have sympathy for this person. And it's not the same that this. And, and you can't you do both. This. And you, you can't, can't do this. both. I really, I really hate it. And that narrative that they keep pushing of, well, she's making all this money, so she can't be sad. Lisa even said it herself in the very beginning of the episode. She's like, she's right to have these feelings, but I probably wouldn't say them out loud. No, the person that Sheena talks to about her feelings about Tom Sandoval is Lala. It should never be Ariana. It is never Ariana. You do not go to the victim with your feelings on the betrayer. Mm -hmm. You do not go to the victim and say, um, "Have feel bad for me and my relationship with the person that did this to you. That's, you don't do that. You go to your other friend and be like, I'm really struggling being stuck in the middle of this. It really sucks. That's who you talk to. You never expect, you should never expect the person that got betrayed to listen to your feelings on it. You should be listening to her feelings on it and supporting her. And she is going to support you, but you don't talk, like you don't, that's not the person you go to. They're already dealing with that person enough. They're already having their feelings about that person. They can't, they can't also hold your feelings on it too. Like that's not the, the place to put your baggage. Mm -hmm. For the moment, you can't put your baggage there. And it's like that with any relationship. Sometimes it's a 90-10, sometimes it's a 60-40, sometimes it's 50-50. But there are moments where you cannot have them hold your, hold your feelings because they don't have the capacity for that right now. Right. Right. And it's like with it's like that any a marriage, a platonic relationship, romantic relationships, familiar relationships like that's just how it is. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you just sometimes you just can't go to that person and you have to go somewhere else. And eventually you're going to be able to go back to that person and you can talk about your feelings. But right now it is about that person and lifting up that person and helping them like swim through this hurricane. Yeah, right. and if that means that she's just getting a whole bunch of opportunities, then so be it. Let her. Let her. Let her. I just doesn't. I just don't complain doesn't, about it. It just doesn't make sense. I like. I could never like. I don't know. Like I. I, I just. I, I. have a hard time having sympathy for Sheena and Lala right now because it's like I can't ever imagine my best friend going through something like that and being like Taylor. I really need you to like listen to my feelings about so-and-so betraying you because like I'm really sad about it too like it's been really hard on me it's been so hard well like what about you it's been hard on you it's been hard on you like that that's like they they, you don't and then one one last thing too I don't know if this is just how it was edited or if it actually was going down this way but one I wrote a note on it because it was bothering me so fucking much I love that but I hate that Lala just would not let anybody fucking speak oh my god it do you remember last week or the week before Ariana brought up that that's what Tom does? Yeah. No, I will. So Ariana brought it up in the reunion. I brought it up last week because that's I remembered that mm-hmm. because of the Lala Tom argument that was going on. But yeah, that's exactly what Lala was doing. Lala Every time somebody was trying to talk some sense into her, she just felt the need to interject and get her point across. Like, shut the fuck up, Lala. It's because when you you. Um, you know, in you, you know somewhere deep down that you were wrong. Um, and you if you get louder, um, the louder you get, the less that person is more likely to fight back. Mm-hmm. Because it's just gonna be like, you know what, whatever, what the fuck ever, you win, right? I think it's that paired with the fact that she's been so triggered by this whole situation that her which her is, feelings are heightened which is totally understandable and totally fine but you know what you do with that feeling you grab a bottle of wine and you grab your friend just a reminder though Lala sober okay you're a non-alcoholic <laughs> wine, right i forgot she's sober okay but fine or you something grab something right Take out in and out. I don't fucking know. Smoke Grab your vape, like, smoke your vape. But you do with that triggered feeling, you commiserate with a friend who's going through it. And you be there to lean on. And you say, like, I understand. I, that is one person in that room that understands you so much right now. You work through those triggers together because I guarantee you that she has the exact same triggers right now. These bitches all need therapy. I mean, Lala, Lala needs therapy. Real bad. I'm like so scared for this, the dynamic with this new child because she really needs therapy. And I like, 
going through this with Randall. And I, I just, she just, it's just, the whole thing is just like, she's just, she's doing it. She's getting louder because she knows that she's wrong. And yeah. she's getting, she's, she's triggered, which is totally understandable, totally fine. Um, but instead of yelling, just commiserate with the person that is like, or separate yourself completely from the situation. Be like, I. Like Ariana. Like, I have your back. I have your back. I'm sorry you're going through this too, but it's a little too raw. I'm a little too raw right now. And I've done that a couple times going through my healing process, right? I'm like, I have your back 999% right now. I just like, I got to remove myself for a hot second mm-hmm. and I will come back. Yep. And that's what I help. That's what you do. It is no different than Ariana being like, for my healing, you can go off with this person, but don't tell me about it and don't talk to them about me. And I'm going to distance myself for a minute until I feel like I'm safe enough to come back. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what you do when you're triggered. You either commiserate with a person that's also the same kind of feeling because it's the only person that's going to understand it. Or you just remove yourself until you can calm the fuck down. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Oh, man. But the episode ends with a little bit of a high. Allie then tries to make this come back to astrology. She's so cute. Just by learning everybody's birth chart, you know? Everybody just will learn how to communicate with each other via our communication styles because of our star signs. It was so sweet. She was trying so hard, and I just like... She's so precious. She really is. I really enjoyed, though, that Katie was sitting on... Like, you could see Katie was not... Katie was not ready to let it go. And we're going to see more of it, too, in the coming weeks. I'm so ready. I want to see Katie. I want to see Katie go off this season. She will. I have a feeling, but um, I really, really enjoyed Katie on the floor, just like that's a fucking bitch. Yeah, her face. She was still so full of like tequila, Katie rage without the tequila. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, that's what happens when you evolve. We are officially through the mid season, and now we have our mid season trailer. There still is so much more to come. I mean, I feel like there was so much to digest. Uh, from this I, mid-season trailer. I had thoughts about it, and I should have wrote them down because I ended up ADHDing, and now I can't remember what they were. I know. there. Well, like I said, it was so much to digest, so I'm sure that we'll probably go over it another time. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all, oh, we, the scene oh. um, at the end of the trailer where she just walks away from Tom. Oh, fucking iconic. Iconic. Oh, my God. And then, and then Tom coming over and be like, she talks shit about all of you. A lot of fourth wall breaking, too. <laughs> Does she though? A whole lot of fourth wall breaking. Oh, and like the 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 ick I got just hearing Jax's voice. Oh yeah, obviously we know Jax <laughs> Taylor will be making an appearance next week because next week is officially the Valley mm-hmm. uh, premiering. So we all know how this is going to go because we've talked about it for weeks, if not months, at this point. But Jax is going to make an appearance to next week's episode, probably closer towards the end because all the guys are going to be going to dinner. The episode's going to end with Jax leaving, which then transitions into the beginning of the valley. So we have that. Honey, to I'm to. home. Yeah. Um, I was taking care of our son today. This, this season is definitely <laughs> ramping up, but I don't know if, I still don't know if we see the longevity in it. Like I was saying no. earlier, I mean, if we do see any longevity in it, it's probably going to be to see the fallout of the rest of the friend group a, a year post because what else is there? Nothing. We're not we're not going to get any real resolution from this. And this is very clear. I mean, we're starting to see the line being drawn in the sand. Which is totally fine. I mean, sometimes there are things you can't come back from. And this is, I think, one of those things you just don't come back from. You're never going to be the same after this. No. No. Well, these, I feel like these, um, I mean, these were the show's main characters. These were like the pillars of the friend group. Mm-hmm. So without them, what do they have? Nothing. There's really nothing, you know? And it's like we were saying, Ariana can do much better than being on another season of Vanderpump Rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sheena will then have to have no choice but to focus on her podcast and her music career. Well, Um, I think um, you and I had said this earlier this week that um, she's going to try and get herself on the Valley if it is Oh, true, true, true. Her and Lala Mm -hmm. will both be going on to the Valley. They will try and get themselves on another (sighs) show. I don't know how I feel about that either. I don't like it. I really hope, though, that they give... um, the sandwich shop something. Something about her. Um, but I would love to see that. Like, Katie and Ariana being badass with their sandwich shop. I watched the hell out of that. Well, now I'm curious. What more is there left? I mean, if they have all their permits, what? what what's the hold up, guys? I don't know. 
I want so badly to believe that this is legitimately happening, but there's some times where I'm like, is it though? Well, that's what the online or speculation is, is at now. Is it just a plot point? Well, that's that's kind of what the speculation is online know. now. It's it's kind of getting a little concerning. I and yeah. Yeah. Before it was all permits, 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 and now we have permits and still nothing. So what's going on, guys? And so I'm like, I want so badly to believe that this is real, and but at the same time, I'm like, is it? Are they just doing it to give themselves something? But I don't see Ariana and Katie being that way. But I think that's really all that we had. Um, we are still considering doing um a separate episode for Rachel's lawsuit. Um, I think we've just a had very little time. Um. Yeah. Just because we've been very busy. Um, but also, I, I'm also low-key kind of waiting to see if anything new comes mm-hmm. of it. But it's probably going to be some time before we even get any new developments on this lawsuit. Oh, so yeah. we shall see. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Yeah. If you do, then hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, follow us on Instagram at Pumped Up Tea. Uh, join our Patreon for some bonus content. We're Definitely waiting to be engaging with some of you guys for sure. We're making fun friends with all of like the other VPR podcasts, so comment, that's very fun. Guys, I want to see comments. I want to see interaction. DM me. Tell me your thoughts. Talk yeah. to me. I guess we'll see y'all for the Love is Blind reunion. <gasps> <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Maybe we'll talk about the Love is Blind reunion next week. I really think we should. I'm so fucking excited for that. I cannot wait to see fucking Trevor try and uh, maneuver his way out of this. <sighs> and Sarah Ann and Jeremy, I have... Oh, 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 I'm so ready. We shall see. <coughs> but hope you guys have a good night. Goodbye.